Hey guys, it's me, Dante Ferrigno, coming back to you again from Ferrigno Freedom Channel. And I just wanted to talk to you about a video that I watched earlier today. The reason I'm not doing a reaction to this video is it's 30 minutes long, and my videos can take a 10 minute video and make it 30 minutes to an hour long. So I wanted to try to keep this as short as possible. And if you want to watch the video I'm talking about, I put a link in the description to it so that you can watch the full length video yourself. It's made by Insider Business Channel. I think they're doing a great job of exposing some things that we don't realize as regular consumers what we're buying when we buy food on the shelves at our local supermarket and our stores. We need to rethink the trust we've put into the people that we've put in charge of providing us with good food. The food that we give to our families, the food that we give to our children. We buy this stuff off the shelves and we don't give a whole lot of concern to what's actually in the box. We pay way more attention to what the box says it is. And this video was very indicative of exactly the kind of thing I've been talking about, but even more than what I've been talking about. I've been talking about things like looking for ingredients and making sure that you're getting the right things in your food. And I still encourage you to do that. Even if you are a full carnivore like I am, where you look for meat only to eat in your diet, you still got to check the labels for ingredients for things like flavoring, whether artificial or natural. Those things are usually hiding something you don't want to have in your food. You know, for a company to go into the business of making food to feed the world, I would consider that a noble calling if that's something you're doing for the right reasons. But the problem is a lot of these companies are way too focused on profit motive and not focused at all on the nutrition and the benefit of the product that they're providing. I've always talked about something that I learned a long time ago when it comes to business. Business can be done right if you're offering value in exchange for value. If I want you to pay me for something, I should give you something of value in return. It should be a fair swap. It should be something that gives you value more than what you gave me and gives me value more than what I gave you. That way, we're making things better for everybody. But what's going on these days is we're buying garbage and we're giving our hard-earned dollars to them. Time we spend away from our family so that we can buy this product and ultimately what we're doing is not doing our family any good. This video is called 11 of the most faked foods in the world. Now some of those foods are actually on the carnivore way of eating for most people. Some carnivores are strict carnivores and they only eat meat. But a lot of the carnivores I've met do include some of the things we're going to talk about that were from this video. And hopefully just knowing about these few things will help you to understand or maybe even help those in your family who are not doing anything to change the way they're eating, who are still in the ultra-processed food system, to open their eyes and take a look at what's going on. So this video piqued my interest because it's pointing to how there are a lot of dangers in the current food system the way we know it. One of the people that does some talking in this video is the author Larry Armstead. He wrote a book called Real Food, Fake Food. And one of the interesting quotes he made at the beginning that I think you should take into mind whenever you're buying food at the grocery store is, at the least end of it, you're getting ripped off. But at the worst end, you're literally getting poisoned. A lot of viewers to this channel asked me about using things like olive oil and coconut oil. And although they didn't go into any detail on coconut oil, they did have a lot to say about olive oil. And I've talked about some of the problems with olive oil being the fact that how it's made makes a big difference to begin with on whether or not that oil is oxidized when it gets to you. If they're hot pressing that oil, then it's already oxidized by the time it gets to you. So it's gonna cause inflammation in your body. And that inflammation is gonna cause you to crave things like junk food and comfort food. It's also gonna cause you to be in pain and not feel good, not wanna exercise. But the things that they talked about were even worse is one, when you buy that olive oil off the shelf, there is a possibility that even when it says extra virgin olive oil, that it may not be extra virgin olive oil. And even when they're not putting a straight out lie on there on the package, there's still a chance that you could be misled by some of the terminology they use when it comes to some of the packaging. You see, olive oil is very easy to imitate the appearance and look and smell of. So they use things like soybean oil and other seed oils in place of the olive oil or mixed in with the olive oil. And when you look at the package, the only indication you might have of this is hopefully the ingredients are gonna tell you what's in there. Then there's also the prospect that you could be just reading the front of the label and you see something like olive oil blend or light olive oil. Anytime you see that, it means that it's not all olive oil or may not even be olive oil at all. Price can also be an indicator as 
Extra virgin olive oil is usually imported from overseas, especially here to the United States. But price isn't the only indicator you need to look for because they could just make their junk really high priced so that you think that it's the real thing. A lot of carnivores like to incorporate cheese into their diet. And one of the cheeses that people like to sprinkle on things or to flake onto things or even grate onto things is Parmesan cheese. Well, Parmesan cheese is one of the most often faked cheeses out there. Parmesan only comes from a specific region of Italy. It has to go through some rigorous procedures to make sure that it's authentic Parmesan. Most of the stuff we're buying in the stores, though, is even worse than what you might be getting if somebody's faking a good hard cheese. And that's when you buy those grated cheeses already in a bottle and you sprinkle them on your food. Those grated cheeses could be a lot of things other than cheese, including rice flour and cellulose. By the way, cellulose is a derivative of wood pulp. So yes, essentially you're eating wood pulp. Honey is another product that people in the carnivore community have told me that they like to incorporate because they wanna have something naturally sweet. I personally stay away from honey because I've gotten to where I just don't wanna have sweet things anymore. I find that when I taste something that's sweet, it might send a message to my pancreas that there's sugar on the way down and that's gonna send out that insulin into my body. And I got a video coming up on insulin that'll tell you why that can be a problem too. You don't wanna have an unnecessary amount of insulin in your body is ultimately what I need to say right now with regard to that. So I try to stay away from sweets altogether. But if you like to have honey, something you should consider is, one of the quotes from the video was this, honey is said to be the biggest secret food fraud that has ever been perpetrated globally. Most of the honey out there is either made from high fructose corn syrup or syrups made from rice, bean, glucose, or even cane. Not to mention, I really don't go out of my way to get chewed up bee vomit. All right, how about beef? Most of the time I go to Sam's Club or some of these nice stores, they will talk about right on the package in the shelves over there, a slightly more expensive type of beef called Wagyu beef. Wagyu beef is really expensive, but only four or five breeds of cow that are in Japan are true Wagyu beef. So it's kind of like Parmesan and champagne in that way. It comes from a specific area of the world, Japan, and it comes from certain species of beef that are fed a certain diet. When you're buying hamburger meat though, very often when you see that that's Wagyu beef, it's not Wagyu beef because Wagyu beef is so fatty that it would be difficult to make hamburgers out of it because it would fall apart so easy. Now this one's not quite so bad, except that you're paying more for a product that you think you're getting something that you're not. Now, the rules are that at least, I think it was 46.5% of the beef has to be from a Wagyu animal. That means that at least one parent has to be at least 90 plus percent of whatever type of breed that it needs to be to be called Wagyu beef. So that means that your beef could be as low as 46% Wagyu beef. And even less than that in the case of restaurants. So when you're buying from a restaurant, it could even be more sketchy than what you're buying from the store. And though I've never had any, and I don't know a whole lot of people going out of the way to get any, something that would certainly be considered carnivore is caviar. I'm not interested in caviar. I'm not interested in eating fish eggs. But if that's something that floats your boat, it might be good for you to know that it could be just about any type of fish that's on those low priced caviars that you can buy in the store. Because so many of these fakes slip right through the system. Some other foods they talk about in the video are wasabi and truffle oils, maple syrup, saffron, vanilla. All of these things are very often faked. So many of us just trust what the government is doing to be protecting us. We figure if the FDA is there, they're watching out for this stuff. But even the FDA admits that food is not their major priority, especially when they're searching stuff that's coming in from other countries. One to 2% is all that's estimated to be reviewed by the FDA on what comes into our country. That means the other 98 to 99% of the food on the shelves that comes from other countries, which is a lot, could be fake. The one thing they did say that was definitely accurate was it comes down to the consumer. We have got to be more careful with what we're putting in our bodies. We've got to stop trusting other people to tell us what these things are. You know, a lot of carnivores tell me that they use some things in their diet that are not necessarily carnivore, like coffee. We've talked about this before. I'm not trying to get in the way of anybody enjoying their coffee, but there are some things you should be aware of. The origin of coffee is very difficult to track, so labeling doesn't really help much. For those of you who don't have a problem drinking coffee, you might be surprised to find out that what you're drinking many times isn't coffee at all. It might have a little bit of coffee in it, 
but it might also be burnt as well and it's going to have a lot of fillers a lot of times and it could say 100 percent colombian coffee it could say all of the things that might indicate to you that it's the good pure stuff that you're looking for but it might be just a big fake as I became a carnivore, I have found it so liberating to be able to go into the grocery store and not have to walk down the aisles and look through all the thousands and thousands of products that they come up with with these crazy names all the time. Everything from Pop-Tart cereals to Mountain Dew flavored hot dogs. I don't look at any of that stuff. I stick to the meat aisle, I get my water, my club soda, and I'm out of there. So that helps me to avoid a tremendous amount of this stuff that we're already talking about. And you can do that too. If you haven't considered a carnivore way of eating, you might want to take a look at some of the videos on my channel because carnivore living has truly changed my life. But I understand how difficult it is to make a switch like this. It's not just about changing something that you eat. It takes an entire lifestyle change. It takes a mindset change about your perception of what you're eating, what you're feeding your family, what you're putting into your body, what you're putting into your mind. This stuff affects not only your body, it affects our hormones, it affects our thinking, it just touches us on all levels. Let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. So the key to that is going to be making sure you're eating actual, real food. And a carnivore way of living is a good way to do that, especially if you buy local. There's a lot of good store-bought meat out there, but be sure you're checking the labels on that too because you'll see added flavorings and that can cause problems for people. And then there's also the scare of them putting other things in our meats that everybody's worried about. And one of the best side effects I've had of being on a carnivore diet is I don't need to go see a doctor for anything except for acute care. If I get in an accident, I may need to go see a doctor. But aside from that, my health is the best it's ever been. And I want you to be healthy. I want you guys to stop feeling sick and fat and tired because you're eating the stuff that we think is good for us, that we've been told for 40 years is totally safe and benign and that we can shove this stuff into our bodies without any effects. Well, I'm here to tell you there is no free ride. There is no way to get out of this unless you start thinking and making good decisions when you're buying your food and decisions about what you're putting in your body. That's all I got for you guys on this one. Check out the video and I'll see you next time. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat? I love carnivore crisps. I keep a bag handy just in case I get a little hungry so that I don't have to be distracted from my work. I can stop for a moment, have some delicious food that is perfectly on my way of eating. Beef brisket is my favorite by far of all the carnivore crisps. Get yours at carnivorecrisps.com and use my coupon code DANTE, D-A-N-T-E, to save 10% on your order. I hope you love them as much as I do.